Since the Iowa caucus is coming up, I thought I should probably tell you guys my credential, even though I've posted way too many videos today. Um, I'll start off by just reading the summary of my resume. I'm a self-taught program computer programmer with an interest in big data, digital forensics, and industrial control system security. Industrial control system security is like water plant security and nuclear power plant security and um, even power grid security. I spent a lot of time thinking about power grid security. Um, while pursuing a master's degree in information technology, I also took online courses on data science with pandas, machine learning. I took four courses on machine learning and I programmed for most of them or for I think all of them. Uh, that well actually probably more than four courses if you think about NLTK um, which is uh, natural language processing uh, I also uh, took three courses on Scala which is a difficult programming language Apache Spark which actually was in Scala um, SQL I took two, cor two courses on SQL uh, Linux I, I spent all my time with Linux pretty much networking statistics algorithms and data structures when I want to know something I find a way to learn it I taught myself memory forensics out of a book and wrote a program to automate memory forensic investigations. Similarly, when I wanted to learn how to program embedded systems, I taught myself Arduino, prog Arduino programming. I am passionate about cybersecurity, but I'm also passionate about people. My undergraduate degree is in international studies, and I love working with people from different cultures. I think my um, ma when I got my master's degree, I had like a 3.91 GPA, so I'm not I'm not a stupid guy. Um, as an undergraduate, I was in this program called BIC, and it's the Baylor Interdisciplinary Corps. I went to Baylor for, as an undergrad. And BIC is an interdisciplinary honors program that examines the human condition through the study of history, science, religion, art, psychology, and philosophy. Roughly 50% of the BIC students drop out by the end of their first year because the program is so, dem because the program is so demanding. And I didn't drop out, and it was very brutal. Um, so my work experience, I, like I said, I was, uh, I, I got this open cloud endowment award, um, that was based on my memory forensics program. And that was sponsored by the department of Homeland security. And, um, so with that award, I did a lot of blockchain and industrial control system security research and also memory forensic research. But um, before that, I was a tutor. I was a writing tutor because, you know, I wrote a book called Cat Orgies, Terrorists, and Monks in, in the Middle East um, about traveling around the Middle East. But it's a fictional book because I didn't want to tell the full story. If you can look it up on the Internet, John Alexander. It's on smashwords.com. Um, I also worked for my dad's company, which was an online education company. So I have experience developing massive online um, um, courseware, um, which is... Um, online education programs. I wrote a course on Marijuana 101, uh, Shoplifting, uh, uh, Nicotine 101, and then Alcohol Wise JV. The current Stoplifting stop course is not the course I wrote. Um, so I, I've, I've developed online education courses a lot, and I've done sales to the court system. So I know a little bit about the legal system because I've spent so much time doing sales to judges. Um, I know Scala programming, um, Python, Java, PowerShell, and SQL. Um, you can look up my code on GitHub, github.com backslash glass code bender, like the last co um, airbender, glass, G-L-A-S-S, -S, code, C-O-D-E, bender, B-E-N-D-E-R. The program, the primary program I wrote was BBS, uh, but I also wrote um, programs to do log analysis and um, my, my idea for this network IDS is based on my program I wrote, Automate, automate PCAP Analysis. Um, and so I also know things like Microsoft Visio, Microsoft Project, Microsoft Access. Um, I know QuickBooks because my brother and I started a medical marijuana dispensary, which will I smoke pot while I'm president? Zero. No, no pot whatsoever. Um, but um, when, I, when I founded that company, I had to learn all about like the science of like um, of growing plants indoors and I, I know a lot about um, indoor farming because of it not just marijuana farming but indoor farming in general and like hydroponics and stuff like that which is applicable to um, trying to solve the energy crisis big time um, but while I was doing that I also had to maintain our inventory and I learned QuickBooks uh, I know Salesforce and Constant Contact and stuff like that Photoshop uh, I also speak conversational Arabic 
I can also crack your password. I can, I can do that sort of stuff, which is not that helpful. So my master's degree from UTSA, at the time that I went there, um, they were, con I saw something that said that they were the number one ranked cybersecurity school in the nation. And that's probably because the main professor, he, um, designed the nuclear networks for, for the, for, for the military. Um, and, but, um, I also did like digital for, I was on the digital forensics t team there. And, um, I, I took a lot of, uh, courses. I took like cyber law. I took courses on databases. I did project management because my degree is actually in business. And so I've done courses on like organizational behavior on like, um, the, like how, how to be a, be a, as good of a manager as possible from a uh, psychology perspective. Um, I did SCADA security, but I also did another project on SCADA uh, for the government. Um, like I did like information technology with Amazon Web Services. Um, I, I did uh, uh, two, two, two tele telecommunications courses, a lot of security courses. Um, I did um, system analysis and design. Uh, strategic strategic management of technology. So um, I know I know a lot about managing um, technology in a way that stimulates growth. Um, uh, so my my course, even, so my degree as a master's my master's degree, even though it sounds technical because I have a degree in IT with a concentration in cybersecurity, um, it was more uh, it was actually surprisingly business oriented because it's through the school of business. And so I, I, I do have a business degree, which is helpful to have in addition to the experience I have working with my dad and uh, working with my brother. I remember when I was uh, taking project management, I asked my professor, I said, I said, how do you deal with a, with a shareholder that texts you all the time? Like you're trying to work and all they do is text you. And he, he told me, he said, um, what you should do is tell them I will only speak to you once a day by email at the end of the day. And, and then, uh, and, and other than that, please don't text me cause I'm busy working. And, um, I thought that was the best answer I've ever heard in my life. Um, so I've, I've written a book. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a solid writer. Um, I, you know, more than anything, you know, my, I have this undergraduate degree in international studies and that was, I got that degree 12 years ago and I, read about international studies every single day. Like I read the news every single day extensively. And I've been reading like the economist and foreignpolicy.com and, and a lot of these websites for a long time. And, uh, and, and also like open source intelligence magazines. I've been, I've been reading them for a long time. So even though my, my degree is in all this technical cybersecurity stuff, my real, my real knowledge is about the world and about world cultures. And so, um, I mean, my, my BIC program, the, the, the BIC program that I graduated from, um, that had five world cultures classes. Like they, what they do is they completely re replace your basics with different courses. So you take world cultures, one, two, three, four, five, you take social world. Um, so it's, it's the, the, the coursework is as that I did as an undergrad was primarily focused in like international studies odd enough. That, so I, I, I consider myself having a PhD in international studies, even though, a real PhD um, would require would require working for the government, doing intelligence gathering. Um, so, you know, one thing I wanted to mention is the Joint Chiefs of Staff. There are seven of them, and the guy in charge of it, um, General Milley, he seems pretty solid. The guy that's number two in the Joint Chiefs of Staff, he's an Air Force guy, and what he says is he doesn't think that um, that nuclear war is justified ever, and so. Um, what I think is important to get across to people is even if I want to do a nuclear war and, and everyone thinks that your hands on the button, you can press a button and you know, the nuclear launch codes, which is true. Um, I really don't think you guys fully understand nuclear war. If you think that's, um, that's going to be the, the real situation in which you launch a war, real wars involve the air force and the Navy. They aren't just nuclear launch codes sending your ICBMs that are land-based from the United States overseas because um, so a lot of the time those can get those missiles can get shot down unless I, I'm sure we're doing hypersonic missiles but I'm not I'm not 100% sure about that but um, the point I'm trying to make is no matter what you think about the president's power to launch a nuclear war single-handedly you don't understand like you're wrong like it, it's it's a group effort and so if 
I, as president, end up in a situation where I need to launch a nuclear war, um, is that a me decision or is that a very, very, very us decision no matter what because the military is who has to do it. It's a lot of people involved. It's not a me decision. That's that's what I think people need to get across because I think a lot of people like this idea of this second currency and they're like, wow, I actually would have a uh, have some extra spending money that I could use on use on used items and it actually sounds good to me but I'm worried about you starting a war single-handedly and what I'll tell you is that's not my decision. That's a group decision. No matter what, it's a group decision.